What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about self-image for self-confidence and um, I firmly believe this is something that can be developed. For some people it comes more naturally but you can always, it's like a mental muscle, like with most things, you can develop it. One of the best ways, there's a lot of ways that you can improve it. One of the best ways I found is to get a better understanding of who you really are. You know, a lot of people are like, I've heard it said that it's not who you are that's holding you back. It's who you think you're not. We all have limiting beliefs and the self-image is part of the paradigm. It's part of a multitude of habits and idea, our conception of ourselves, the way we view ourselves. Oftentimes, we have a lot of limiting beliefs that are aren't even true. If we really questioned them and really got to the root of them, we'd find that, wait, what the heck, why have I been believing that? Like, it makes no sense. So one of the best ways is to get a better understanding of self and uh, you can read some material, like one of my favorite books uh, on self-confidence is, it's on self-image psychology, it's called uh, Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. If you haven't read that one already, I would highly recommend, that one's an excellent read for anyone in sales or just anyone in general, just in life. So. Dr. Maxwell Maltz, he was, just to give a little background, I'll keep it brief, but um, he was a plastic surgeon. He was like one of the first pioneers of plastic surgery back in like the 50s or 60s. And he made a remarkable discovery. He, had, he noticed that he would have some patients that would come in, they, let's say they had like a distasteful scar on their nose or on their cheek, somewhere on their face, like, like they got in a car accident or something like that. And uh, they came to him like, can you please help fix the scar? Now he noticed there was two, two types of people. There was two groups. So that's one person, one type of person that he would do a surgery on the scar, let's say it's on the nose, and he'd make it look like it never happened. He fixed it, it looks amazing. Now, that group of person, you know, that type of person, their whole life's changed. They got their confidence back, their income improved, their relationships were better, they just had a, they felt really good about themselves and about life in general. That's one type of person. Now, there was another type of person that, after having the surgery, let's say it was on the nose, they had a scar on their nose after a car accident, he made it look like the scar was never there. They looked phenomenal, he did a great job. The pers that person would wake up from their surgery and they'd look in the mirror and they'd be like, what the hell, I look the same, like what, what'd you do? Like, I don't like it. And he's just like, dumped on it, like what? And the person's family's all around him and they're like, what are you talking about? You look amazing, you did a great job. He's like, no, I look the same, what are you talking about? This looks awful, like give me my money back. And So what he noticed is that, huh, there's two groups of people. One person, you know, their whole life changed after having the plastic surgery. Another person, you know, they they still lack confidence after having the plastic surgery. So he's like, well, wait a second. So the power is not in the knife that I'm doing the surgery with. The power is not in the surgery. He realized, oh, there has to be a hidden self-image within the person's mind that's responsible, that's causing the results and the self-confidence that's you know exuding into their lives. So he made it his mission. He felt that it was his duty as a psych, as a as a plastic surgeon to learn a thing or two about psychology because he figured if he's going to be changing people's faces, he's also going to be changing their personalities and therefore changing their lives. So he felt it was his duty as a human being to not only learn about plastic surgery but to learn about psychology. So he wrote a whole book on like self confidence, self image, and how that affects people's lives. So that's a really good one. So the self image is part of your paradigm. It's a part of your beliefs and. Um, in this industry, it's an absolute must. You know, the amount of confidence you have will directly correlate to how you, you know, your sales presentation, your ability to influence others. So, and again, it can always be improved upon. I mean, even even some of the most confident people know that their confidence can be improved. So, if you're anything like me, I'm always about improving. I, even if I'm doing great in one aspect, I want to do better. So. Uh, that's kind of a brief introduction to uh, self-image and self-confidence. Any questions, just reach out to me.